I'm trying to prove this if-then statement involving integers, sums of integers, and even integers. So I'm going to try to do this proof live for you so you can kind of think about uh, the process that takes place. Because generally when you're doing proofs, you don't just start in writing the proofs. You do a lot of background work. You try different methods of proof, so you try forward, backward, uh, proof by contradiction. Just kind of go through those different proofs uh, involving conditional statements and see which one works. So to start, you always want to write down the statement you're trying to prove. So I've started by you know, typing out this statement and seeing if I can wrap my head around it. Before you go into proof, you want to make sure that you fully understand the statement. You can do this by finding a few specific examples that satisfy this if-then statement. You can uh, make sure that you understand all associated definitions. And you're going to see in this course, all of our proofs are somewhat straightforward, right? In practice, you know, proving statements is quite difficult but here we're you know we're trying to prove some statements just so that we can understand how a proof works and how to compose a proof you do have to rack your brain sometimes but know that all right so the first thing i'm going to do is just kind of write out this statement in some different ways I'm trying to prove that if m plus n and n plus p are even integers where m n and p are integers then p m plus p is even so let me just kind of write down this info. So I know that m, n, and p are integers. Okay. I know that n plus n and n plus p are even integers. And I'm trying to show that with those two pieces of information, I can prove that m plus p is even. So I'm trying to take these two pieces of information, make some connections, and get to the conclusion that m plus p is even. Now the way that I just talked through it would be a direct proof. With a direct proof of an implication, I assume my hypothesis is true. And then I make some logical connections and eventually show that this means that m plus p, well, conclusion is true. Okay, so I'm going to try this direct strategy here. I'm pretty sure it's going to work, um, but you will find that other methods of proof will also work here. So, uh, what I'm going to do first, instead of just, again, I'm not going to jump into the proof. I'm just going to try to understand what I have going on. So, what I'm going to do is just try to write out a list of things in ways that I can connect this. So, I'm going to start with my assumption that, um, well, really, I'm just declaring these as integers, okay? And then, I'm going to say m plus n, n plus p, even. Okay, so now I've introduced a term that has some sort of definition. So I want to make sure that I understand what that definition would give me. If these integers, this sum of integers, if it's even, then I know by definition of in even integers, then this sum is equal to 2 times some integer, where k is an integer, now be really careful, we can't say n plus p is equal to 2k because it's not necessarily the same number. If I put n plus p equals 2k, then I'd be assuming an additional assumption that m plus n and n plus p is the same thing, but it's not. So I need to make sure to introduce a new variable here. So this is just using the definition of even integers here. Okay. So now, let's see. Where are we trying to go? So this is what we know, right? So this is what we know. 
where we're trying to get, where we're trying to get, go, we're trying to get to a conclusion that m plus p is 2 times, let's say s, well s is an integer. I'm trying to make this conclusion. So I'm trying to show that m plus p is 2 times some integer. So I don't know that m is even, I don't know that p is even. So I can't just, you know, use those definitions, plug them in, and then I have the sum of two even integers, even I'm done. I don't have that information about m and p. I have information about m plus n, and I have information about n plus p. So unfortunately, you have to be a little bit creative here, um, and you have to figure out how you can get something, how you can know something about m plus p using these two expressions. So let's, let's figure out what we know. Let me try to write this one more way and we can see if you see it. All right, so we're trying to go from m plus n, n plus p, to conclude something about m plus p. So it's kind of like when you have a system of two equations with two unknowns. When you have those two equations with two unknowns, you usually combine the two equations so that you can figure out something about your unknowns. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, we have two equations, right? We know that this is equal to, I think we said 2k, and we said this was equal to 2l for some integers 2k uh, and l. We're trying to show that this equals 2 times something. So what if we combine these two equations to tell us something about this? Okay, And this is just a trick um, that you would happen upon, and unfortunately there's not... <laughs> Not a great way always to see these tricks. So you just have to play with what you have and see what you can do with it. Um, just like when you have an equation, there are certain things you can do with an equation, right? Add zero to both sides, multiply both sides by some number, add some number to both sides, right? So you've just got these tricks and you just kind of play around and see what works. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's try to combine these two equations. If I combine them, I'm going to add the left-hand side, add the right-hand side. So I'm going to add these two equations together. So m plus, on the left-hand side, I'm going to get m plus n plus n plus p. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to get 2a, 2k plus 2l. All right, now I'm getting closer. I'm not there yet, but I see my m plus p. I've got this issue with this n plus n, but I think I can kind of figure out how to deal with it maybe. So what I'm going to do is kind of group together my m plus p using um, the commutative property of addition of integers, meaning I can add these in any order. Okay. So I just combine those n's so that I can move things around a little bit easier. So 2n plus p is the same as p plus 2n, so I can write it like this. Okay, so now I have it as an equation, so that allows me to do a lot more than just with uh, expression. So I want to end up with m plus p equals something. So just like when you're solving for a variable with an equation, let's go ahead and isolate that term. How would we isolate that? Well, we have this 2n here. I'd like to just end up with m plus p. So now m plus p is equal to, this adds to 0, so I'm just in, left with m plus p. It's equal to 2k plus 2l minus 2n. Okay. And now, hopefully you can see that I have built the bones of my proof. Okay. I've shown that m plus p is equal to 2 times some integer, right? Uh, here I just have an integer plus another integer minus an integer. So the sum of integers is are integers, so I know I have two times some integer. Now, if I were to give you this solution, like this, I hope that you would yell at me and say, this doesn't make any sense, I can't read it, I can't follow your logic, I don't know what m and n and p mean clearly, I don't know what all these symbols mean, okay? So we want to try to write this out 
we've figured out the bones of our proof. Now we want to try to write it out in a way that makes things clear so that your proof could stand alone without the statement and you, your reader would be able to look at the proof and understand what has been proven and wouldn't have to do too much work to try to piece together what you did. So let's try that. So keeping these bones in mind, let's try to now write a formal proof. Okay? And I expect to see this on all your proofs, guys. It's going to be really difficult for you just to kind of dive in and write a proof. You have to think about it. You have to play things around. It, it happened that it worked out on the first try, but that was just lucky. So that doesn't always happen, okay? Sometimes you've kind of got, you know, five different things like this where you're playing around and finding things that work and don't work, okay? I got lucky because I've done this before. So um, I'm hoping later on to show you something where I don't, I haven't done before so you can kind of see me struggle a little bit because I do too, okay? All right, so let's try to write the proof. So to tell my reader that I'm beginning a proof, because I don't want them to look at that messy thing here, right? It's okay to have this at the beginning, but I want to be sure that I say, okay, now my proof is beginning. This is the more easily understandable portion of this piece of paper. So I want to identify and beginning my proof. So you want to be sure that all variables you use anywhere in your proof are clearly declared, just like in your programs, right? You can't all of a sudden start using the variable um, T without telling your program, telling your computer what that T is. You know, is it an integer? Is it a decimal number? How, you know, what is it, right? We gotta, we gotta communicate that. So we're gonna begin our proof. We are going to let M, N, P be integers, right? So we know what M, N, and P are. Okay, now our other part of our initial assumption, right, because we are going to assume the hypothesis and show that that means that the conclusion must be true. So I'm going to say assume that n plus n and n plus p are even. Assume m plus n and n plus p are even integers. Okay. Now a natural thing to do right after you're making assumption about the parity of your integers is to use the definition of even or odd integers to rewrite those expressions in a different way. Okay, so I'm going to say then by definition of even integers of even integers m plus n is equal to 2k and now I used a new variable I need to make sure to introduce it I'm not going to have an overlapping variable right I can't say m plus n is equal to 2n that doesn't make any sense right I can't say n plus p is equal to 2k that doesn't make any sense either okay? And I need to make sure that I say k and l are integers, right? So I'm just using the definition of even integers here. Okay, now comes a little like arithmetic portion. And generally with your proofs, you want to write and complete sentences. But when you're doing uh, arith arithmetic type things and just like manipulating equations, it's okay to have a little section where you're manipulating the equation. You don't necessarily have to explain that all within sentences, um, but it should be clear how you got there and, and how, how you got out of there. So your first and, and last step should be obvious and explained. So I'm just going to say notice, because that's a good transition word um, when we're trying to go into some manipulation here. m plus n plus n plus p is equal to 2k plus 2l and so guys you know we're all pretty capable of uh, algebraic manipulation of equations so it is okay to skip some of that but I would tell you it's at this point 
for me to be able to understand where you got things, it's important that you show me that somewhere, okay? So if you decide to omit some algebra stuff from your proof, then you should have shown me that you did the algebra you know, somewhere else, okay? But for now, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that algebra here so that there's no question in my reader's mind what I've done, okay? So I'm just gonna go through and do those, do those steps to show how I'm getting to my conclusion. We're getting there. All right, so now that's zero, so I've just got m plus p is equal to two times k plus l minus n. Okay, and that's our little end of our algebra portion. So, because k plus l minus n is an integer, m plus p is 2 times some integer hence by definition of even integers m plus p is even and that's it. We've made it clear that this is our conclusion. Our hypothesis was that n plus n and n plus b are even integers. So someone who's reading this proof should be able to identify that hypothesis and conclusion. You could take it one step further and restate the what you were trying to prove, you know, just restate the original uh, statement. But, you know, this is enough, right? As long as your hypothesis and conclusion is clear, then you've done what you need to do. So I hope this helps. Um, let me know how you proved it. Did you find a different way? There's different ways, right? This isn't the only way. Okay. Talk soon.